FPL game week four final decisions. The international break is over, but there have been several injuries and a few key things that we need to decide going into the game week four deadline. Are we going to see Dominic Solanke back? Is Oli Watkins going to start? Is Erling Haaland going to be cleared to play in game week four? We're going to cover all of that. We'll have injury updates. We'll have an updated wildcard draft. We'll have a look at my team. Answer the best players to buy as well going into your game week four final decisions. What is up everyone, FPL Harry here. And before we dive in, 2000 likes is the aim. Subscribe if you are new around here. And before we go into it, I know some of you will be asking already, Harry, why on earth are you sat in a shirt? I was very lucky enough this morning to be on the FPL show in the studio, in, the, in person for the first time for a record. I'll leave the link in the description, but I've literally just got back, did my graphics and have sat down to record this video to get it out for you as soon as possible, which is why I'm looking a little bit smarter. You never see me in a shirt but that's why i am but let's dive in and answer a few of your questions the first thing is the hot topic questions first of all would i sell bakai saka to mo salah the answer is yes i would do it for free no i wouldn't do it for a minus four saka does have a fantastic record of scoring goals against spurs i do think salah is a slightly better option going into game week four but game week five is the real thing for me so if you don't have the free transfer i would hold off and do it going into game week five that is the fixture where Salah has Bournemouth, whereas Arsenal do play Manchester City. The next one is, do we think Erling Haaland is likely to start for Manchester City? Now, unfortunately, Erling Haaland over the past week has had the very unfortunate news that one of his close family friends has passed away. And we've heard that Manchester City might give him time off to go back home to see his family and to see his friends as well. Now, we haven't really been given anything. Pep has said that he's going to check with Erling Haaland tomorrow before the game. If he is mentally and physically available and ready enough to play this game, I don't want to speculate too much on the mental and physical state that this might put Erling Haaland in, but it does sound like he's not yet decided that he's going to travel home, so he should at least be with the squad, which is probably a boost. I do expect him to play, and I do still plan on captaining him and my team. That's as a result, he is the number one captain going into game week four. Mo Salah is in there as my number two pick. I do think it's very close between them, but I do just about favour Erling Haaland. If you are going to captain Haaland, of course, make sure you have a reliable first sub in case he doesn't feature and a reliable vice captain as well. Cole Palmer is in as number three. We've then got Eze in at number four. Then the number five pick could be Fernandez, but I've got Ollie Watkins in here, given that we've had a positive update from Unai Emery in his press conference today. So next up are some of the key bits of injury news. Number one is Ollie Watkins. He has been said that he's back in training. He will be in the squad. He is available to play. He's not, you know, categorically said that he's going to start, but he's given us as good as that. So if you've got Watkins, that's absolutely fine to play. I probably wouldn't be buying though, just based on the form we've seen. Cole Palmer is a similar one, but he's been in training and pitched back in training for Chelsea for a week now. Absolutely no problems there. And Ezri Konzo of Aston Villa has also been cleared. Unai Emery said it was just a knock and he does expect him to be available for selection for Everton at home going into game week four. More positive injury news for West Ham. It does look like Ariola is back. He's overcome the back injury he came in game week three, which forced him off at half time, and he should be available to start in game week four. Dominic Solanke is next. Of course, he missed both game week two and game week three and was a doubt going into game week four. However, Ange has said he should be available. He's been training over the past few days. He didn't categorically say that he's going to start against Arsenal, but he should be at least in the squad. And that means he should be back to start in game week five once their fixtures do start to look really nice as well. We didn't really get that much of a concrete update on Martin Odegaard. Arteta said he needs to evaluate him. He still needs to have some tests. The original unconfirmed reports were that it would be about three or four weeks. We'd see him return in game week seven or game week eight after the next international break. A few more bits of injury updates to continue with. First of all is Branthway of Everton. Now he's not highly owned, but it does have a knock-on impact on the Everton defence and his opponent. They do have Aston Villa this week and Branthway is out training on the grass, but he's still away off starting this game. Next up is Nathan Ake again, who doesn't look like he's going to feature until after the next international break. It does make the likes of Gavardio slightly more nailed, although we could see Rico Lewis start at left back like he did for England. But it does make those Manchester City defenders all slightly more nailed if there's going to be no Ake for the next four or so matches. And finally, we've got Jao Pedro. Not really an injury update, just do we think he's going to be back ready to start going into game week four? He was meant to be back in Brighton on Thursday before training on Friday and should at least be in the squad. And I do expect him to start both for Brighton and in my FPL team this weekend. 
And the final bit of injury news, Phil Foden, along with Rodri, along with Walker, along with Savinio, have all been in Manchester City training this week, all available for selection. We might finally see the return of Phil Foden going into Brentford at home in game week four. Leon Bailey wasn't really mentioned in the Aston Villa press conference. We're still expecting him out, which is a boost to the minute going forward of Morgan Rogers, but it does mean that there might be less rotation than with Champions League. Could that impact a bit of fatigue? And then looking at the Spurs defence, Van der Ven is back, which definitely is a boost. Dragashin has been fine, but he's nothing on Van der Ven, and we saw that in game week three as well. Van der Ven likely to be back and start against Arsenal in game week four. Next up, let's have a look at some top players to buy, starting off in goal. Despite the fixture, if you're looking long-term, David Raya for me will be the number one goalkeeper on this list for probably the majority of the season. If you're looking for a cheaper goalkeeper at the moment, it's probably Brabrugan of Brighton based off the short-term fixtures. Long-term, I do like Flecken though. The Brentford fixtures from game week six onwards are the best, but the next two are not great. Again, on wildcard, that's probably the goalkeeper I would go with. Next, we have Allison of Liverpool. The Liverpool fixtures short time over the next three, four weeks do look pretty nice. He's probably not worth 5.5. I would be looking at one of the top three goalkeepers on this list. But if you don't have a trend and you do want to weigh into the Liverpool defence, I don't hate it. And then we're going with Henderson. You know, Crystal Palace haven't looked amazing over the first few weeks, but they have, you know, kept a lot of their main defenders. Gay stayed. They've signed Chalaba, although he's a doubt going into the weekend. And their fixture run is pretty decent enough over the next sort of 10, 15 game weeks. So as a long-term pick, I don't mind him. In to defense, we're going to start off with Trent Alexander-Arnold. Again, the short-term fixtures are great. I do think there is an attack in return coming for him very, very soon. I've gone with Van Dijk as a cheaper option into the Liverpool defense. You could go with Robertson, who is on some set pieces, but with him getting older and Simicast being there and there being the Champions League, I think there's a slight doubt that Robertson might not start all of the next four matches, so I have gone with Van Dijk. I also think that Canate is a big risk because Kwanzaa can easily start some of those matches. Despite being a little bit not the best so far this season, I don't think I'd go there. So Van Dijk is in. A bit like Henderson in goal, I do like Munoz or Crystal Palace as a long-term pick and I do think they will look pretty good after the international break. Dunk is a nice cheap option for the next two weeks, but if you need a cheap defender for the longer term, I've gone with Pau Torres of Aston Villa. There are a few defenders who are not on this list, which I know you might want me to talk about. The first of which is Rico Lewis of Manchester City. Personally, I think the buy window for Rico Lewis has passed. They play Brentford this week, but then it is Arsenal and Newcastle away. And we don't know what Carl Walker's return is going to do. Plus the Champions League, I wouldn't be buying him. The other one that's being asked about a little bit is Purvis Estupanan of Brighton. He hasn't actually started a game yet, but he should be back fully fit going into game week four. There is a bit of doubt exactly if he's going to start and when everyone is fit who their first choice left back. but the manager has spoken pretty highly of him so he is worth a punt he's just up at five million and maybe you just go for dunk into midfield Mo Salah is number one and I normally don't include the likes of Salah in this list that's why there's no Palmer both Salah and Palmer are fantastic by this week but Mo Salah is one of the most highly transferred in so I had to put him in the list as the best midfielder to buy this week if you do have a route to him again I wouldn't sell Saka to him for a hit but I would do Saka to Salah for free this week or next week going into game week five Eze has Leicester at home this week and long-term fixtures I do like. Some set pieces look great in there as well. Luis Diaz is the other Liverpool option I'd go with over going with Diogo Jota. Madueke has been spoken very, very highly by the Chelsea manager. And if you can't afford Cole Palmer, offers a fantastic route into the Chelsea attack. And then we're going with Toma of Brighton. Slightly lower down the list just because that Brighton team do share goals around a lot. But I've been very impressed by him so far this season. There's no Brian and Bumo in the list because the next couple of fixtures are not great, but he'll be probably the number one midfielder to buy once game week six does roll around. And then there is Minte as well. If you want to go Minte as a cheaper option to Matoma, I absolutely don't mind that. But if you have the money, I would go Matoma. And the final one is Rogers, who's not on this list. And I don't mind him. The Aston Villa fixtures do look good. I do worry about them a little bit with Champions League, but at 5.1 million, you can't really go that wrong. Then moving up front, of course, no Erling Haaland in this list. But if you have a route to Haaland, I still would buy him this week. Jao Pedro is number one and I would go with him over Danny Welbeck. Yes, the attacking return so far this season, the underlying data might slightly favour Welbeck. But I do think Jao Pedro is on penalties and I do think his minutes are more secure long term than you're going to get with Danny Welbeck. Jackson of Chelsea is number two at the moment based on, you know, short term fixtures and the returns he's got so far this season. It looks like Dominic Slanky should be back for game week four. And I love the Spurs long term fix. And I think Slanky will get a lot of chances and goals as well. 
Bisa is in there at number four. Not the best to buy this week. But again, the Brentford fixtures from about game week six on, which look fantastic. And then we've got Alexander Izak. A lot of people are selling him, but I still think he's a decent forward. I didn't sell him in my team thinking he's a bad pick. I just thought that the money could be better spent elsewhere. Looking at a wildcard draft. So this is a little bit different. This is, I think, the actual wildcard draft that I presented on the FPL show this morning. If you want to go and watch that clip or it'll be back out, as I mentioned, on the TV this evening. There are a couple of changes, though, to what we've presented in the previous weeks. We've gone with Flecken and Fabianski. Now, straight away, I know you're going to ask me, why have you got Fabianski in here over going with Valdemarsson? The reason is, is you might want a third Brentford player in the likes of Visa up front or a Rico Henry in defense or something. And having a backup 4 million goalkeeper doesn't really feel worth it. So you can go with Fabianski or any of the other 4 millions. Flecken is the best long term. If I had money for David Raya, I would go there. But I can't afford it in this draft. In to defense. So the reason we've got Trent slash Van Dijk is if you can't afford this draft, I think Trent down to Van Dijk is probably the easiest way for you to go and afford the money. We've got Pedro Porro, we've got Munoz and Pau Torres. It allows you to bench Porro this week along with Greaves, who is the 4 million defender that I've gone with. Into midfield, we are starting with Brian and Bumo. He is likely to start for you this week. Eze is in there and then Mo Salah and then Rodgers. And then finally, it is Semenyo. There isn't triple Liverpool in this draft. If you wanted it, you could potentially do Trent to Van Dijk and Porro to Robertson. That's something I don't mind. But at the moment, there is just double Liverpool. So Rodgers, Semenyo, the final midfielders and up front. It's Haaland, Jao Pedro. And it is Jackson at the moment, just because there's a slight uncertainty of Solanke's minutes. But I do think Jackson to Dominic Solanke is a transfer I would plan over the next few weeks. Looking at my team, there is very little to talk about in my team. My transfers were made a while ago. It's just the captaincy that I'm looking at. I'm pretty certain I'm going to start Pedro Porro and bench Gabriel as well going into the deadline. I don't think that's going to change. Of course, there's a slight doubt going into the deadline if there's any early news on Haaland or anything like that that might change my lineup. But at the moment, I'm pretty confident this is what it's going to look like. It just comes down to the captaincy for me on Erling Haaland versus Mo Salah. Camsey is one of those that I try to put a good case for that Haaland is a better captain than Salah and although I think he is I do think it's pretty close. Salah does have a Champions League game a day earlier. Haaland is looking like he's on absolute fire and he of course has that record in his sights of scoring three Premier League hat-tricks in three games in a row which has not been done in the Premier League ever and I know Haaland absolutely loves those sorts of things and will be gunning for it. I don't mind Salah at all as a captain and he is a very very close second as a vice captain. So that is all for the final decisions video. Of course, these streams will be back. Apologies, I missed the game week three stream. And actually, because of the international break, feels like it's been an awful long time since I've done a deadline stream. We're back for game week four and we're back every single weekend like that as well going forward. Make sure you click the link above and click notify. The stream is already scheduled. Tune into that to see any late deadline news going into it. Maybe some Manchester City early team news. Maybe some Liverpool early team news on Diogo Jota, Luis Diaz, everything like that as well because they do have Champions League midweek thank you all so much for watching if you are wondering why i'm sat in a shirt looking awfully smart do watch the start of the video again it's just because i've been on the fancy show this morning i will leave the link in the description if you want to go and check it out once again thank you so much for the support the support on this channel on twitter is what gives me the platform and the opportunity to go and do amazing things like this i look forward and hope that i get to do it again um, but do give me any feedback on how you think i did on it as well have a lovely weekend. Enjoy the FPL being back. Hopefully I'll see some of you on the deadline stream as well. 2000 likes is the aim to subscribe if you're new around here and I'll be back again very soon.